Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to part two of my spring cleaning mini series. Today we are tackling my bedroom and my bathroom and our shower, which is really, really bad in there. We are also going to be moving down to the basement and just doing everything down there. We need to carpet clean, we need to clean baseboards, do all the things. I have a list going, so we have a ton of work ahead of us, but I did have some exciting news to share with you guys today. This is not only to spring clean our house for ourselves, but we actually found a house in Arizona. We completely fell in love with it and we put an offer in, they accepted and we are moving to Arizona. I am so, so excited. We were definitely not anticipating moving this fast or this quickly. We didn't even know for sure if we were moving there, but once we saw this home, we just knew that was where we were meant to be. So I'm really excited to be sharing this journey with you guys. Stay tuned because there will be a lot more like packing videos and just, things coming up to prepare us for the move. There is a little bit of time before we do move down there, but this is just the start of it all. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on into it. So before we get going, I really wanted to open up all of the doors and open up all the windows and just get a lot of that really nice, fresh, crisp air flowing throughout the room. This is something I love doing all the time whenever the weather permits, but definitely whenever I'm cleaning or especially when I'm doing like a really deep clean like this, I really love having that fresh air come in. I just feel like it makes a world of difference in how everything feels and also my motivation goes way up when I do this. So the first thing on my list is to get my room all tidied, which means making the bed, also tackling any laundry that's been waiting for me to do. And in this case, it was Noah's laundry, our youngest son. So I am just going through it and kind of sorting everything out, making sure it's all folded the right way. And then I actually had Luke come up, which is our oldest son, and I had him help Noah bring it down to his room and just get all of that put away. Our oldest two boys usually do this by themselves, but it really helps me when one of them will help out Noah or otherwise I just usually kind of do that with him and help him out so that was super helpful especially since I have so much going on today that they just came up and helped him out and getting everything put all away My sad little plant got spider mites and I had to cut out basically all of it and only these two little leaves are surviving and hopefully the rest will regrow but we'll see. So 
so now that my room is all picked up and I have my diffuser going, I am just going to start tackling my spring cleaning list and I am starting out with all of my windows and mirrors. Now I just showed you an up close of my mirror. Noah recently discovered that this mirror is in my bedroom and so he has been dressing up in his costumes and of course rubbing his hands all over the mirror all the time. So this has been something that I've been trying to kind of start cleaning a little bit more often since he just recently discovered this. But the reason that I really wanted to show you that is because I wanted to show you how clean my eat cloths get our windows and our mirrors with just using water. It is seriously incredible. I know you guys are probably tired of me telling you this, but it just always blows my mind every time I do it because it only uses water and it gets everything totally streak free. Sunshine, sunshine Give me, give me them good times, good times Nothing, nothing but good vibes, good vibes Give me, give me that sunshine, sunshine Bring on the summertime So I'm doing my best to remind myself to work from the top to the bottom. So for example, I'm trying to do our windows and I'm trying to do our fan and then I'm moving on to baseboards and then I'm moving on to the floor and that way I'm not going to be like doing the floors and then going ahead and doing fans and just watching all of that dust fall down to the floor that I just cleaned. So I'm doing my best to do this, but definitely having a list can help you stay on track with that. But once I got the fan cleaned, I was on to baseboards, which is definitely my least favorite part of spring cleaning. I hate getting down on my knees. And a few of you have actually sent me links on different things to try out for cleaning baseboards. So I think I'm going to end up trying that out next time. But this time I just went ahead with my way I always do it. And that is just by grabbing a bowl along with some warm water and a multi-surface concentrate and just pouring that all into a bowl. And then I just go around and kind of hand scrub everything. And I also started using these knee pads this year. They have been a lifesaver or at least a knee saver in this case. They have made it so much nicer. I feel like as I've gotten older the last few years, every time I get down on my hands and knees like this, it just hurts my knees so badly. And so this really has helped me and it's just made a world of difference. So if you have not picked up some knee pads and you like to do your baseboards the same way that I do, definitely grab yourself a pair. They're not too expensive and I have already been using them for a lot of different things that I'm on my hands and knees for. It's gonna be a better day. So this next part is pretty bad. It's something that I rarely, rarely do. And as you will see, it definitely looks like I rarely do this, but I actually am getting down on my hands and knees and I am pulling everything out from under my bed. And then I'm actually going to be vacuuming under my bed as well. This is a place where our cats just totally live. They love snuggling up down underneath the bed. And this is where everything just goes to hide. So we found a lot of stuff under here, but the best way that I have found to do this is to actually use a broom and just push everything to one side. And you can definitely do this by yourself, but it really does help if you have a buddy and someone to kind of help pull everything through when you're pushing it through with the broom. So that is what Kyle and I are doing here. I am just pushing everything through with the broom and then he is going through and pulling everything out the other side. Next on my list was to clean our floors, which consisted of a regular vacuum and then also going back through and doing a slow vacuum and then finally carpet cleaning. Now slow vacuuming is something that I have shared a lot over the last several months, but it's something that I just started doing more regularly. I've done this actually for a long time, but I really didn't do it super regularly until recently and it has made a huge, huge difference. So if you are new to the whole slow vacuuming thing, all you're gonna do is just do a regular vacuum over your floor and then go ahead and empty out your canister 
and then you are going to literally just slow vacuum your floor. You move at a super slow pace and it just helps give your vacuum that time to really suck up all of the extra dirt and hair and you will be amazed at how much comes out of your floors. It's kind of amazing, kind of disgusting, definitely necessary. But one thing that I was really amazed at is how much I got from underneath our bed because I did do a regular vacuum under there but then I also went through and actually slow vacuumed under our bed and I filled up multiple canisters of mostly dirt and hair, like pet hair, cat hair. It was just a mess under there. So I am really kind of a little bit nervous about when we actually go to move our bed, when we move in a month or so. I know we're going to get up even more out of this carpet, but I'm really happy to at least be getting this much out for now. Shining bright at the end of this tunnel. Oh, uh -huh, uh -huh. shining like the sun, shining like the sun brighter than go. Oh, oh. Uh -huh. I'm not pretending that it's all okay, but I know tomorrow there'll be better days. Yeah, I can see blue skies up on the way. Yeah, but there'll be rainbows after the rain. Grabbing the wheel, taking control. Love is the medicine we're looking for. Lean on each other like never before. Cause I don't think we've ever needed it more. All right, we pulled our carpet cleaner out and it is not working. So Kyle is running to the store and he's just gonna rent one of like the rug doctors today and tomorrow we're gonna carpet clean our bedroom and then also the basement tomorrow. So that's just how it goes. I feel there's always some kind of hiccup, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. It'll probably get a better clean. Sometimes those like professional ones do a little bit better job than the ones that you can get at home anyway. So we'll just chalk it up to that, find the silver lining. But while he is at the store grabbing that, I am going to hop into our bathroom and start working on everything in there. We can connect, make a connection. So light it up, light it up, light it, light it up. All right, I'm going to first start in our shower because this is going to need a little bit of extra work. And planning to clean our shower heads. So I'm gonna have to soak that in some vinegar and then spray everything else down. And then I'm also going to want to spray down this wall. I hope you can see like all that soap scum. I'm going to get what I can off with just my spray. And then if I need to, I'll bring in some magic eraser. And one way or another, we are going to get that looking good. Just another little hiccup to add to the pile, but I forgot I am completely out of white vinegar which is what I was going to soak the shower head in just to kind of like take care of all that hard water. But I can't even get a hold of Kyle. I'm not sure if he left his phone in the car or at home or has it on silent or something, but I can't get a hold of him to pick that up while he's at the store. So I think I'm just going to make do with whatever I have and we will make the best of it. We will get it done as best we can. And then if I need to later on, I can always just go to the store and get vinegar and kind of clean it that way later on. But for now, we'll just make do with what we got. Shining bright at the end of this tunnel. Oh, uh -huh, uh -huh. shining like the sun, shining like the sun brighter than go. Oh, 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 I'm not pretending that it's all okay, but I know tomorrow there'll be better days. Yeah, I can see blue skies up on the way. Yeah, but there'll be rainbows after the rain. Grabbing the wheel, taking control. Love is the medicine we're looking for. Lean on each other like never before. Cause I don't think we've ever needed it more. So one of my favorite ways to clean really bad hard water stains and soap scum in our shower is to use the CLR bath cleaner and you just spray that right on and then I just use a Dollar Tree scrubber and I scrub it down really good and then rinse it. And then my little trick for this is once you are all done, if you go back through with a magic eraser, it is going to get any of those extra little bits and pieces of like hard water and soap scum that didn't come off with the first scrub and I swear it ends up looking like it is brand new tile 
This tile in our shower is particularly hard because it's not actually a flat surface. It looks pretty flat, but there are a lot of grooves and like little tiny nooks and crannies that everything just loves to hide in and makes it really hard to clean. And this is definitely the best way that I have found to get this clean. But another quick tip is if you don't have a CLR cleaner, you can go ahead and just use Dawn dish soap and white vinegar and you just do a one part to one part mixture in a spray bottle. You spray that on, you let that sit for about five minutes and then you do the same thing just kind of scrub and rinse it and it will look really great as well. So that's another quick tip if you are just looking for a different way to clean your tile. But those befores that I showed you just a minute ago is exactly why I really need to just make it a priority to nail down a weekly cleaning routine. I have kind of tried different ones and I feel like nothing has really been sticking lately and when I don't have a good weekly cleaning routine in place, that is when things like this, like those side projects and those side cleaning areas really get pushed off even more to the side and just don't end up happening. So please, no judgment here. I share these real life moments with you guys to encourage you and just let you know that you're not alone. So I really do appreciate you guys letting me share that stuff without getting a lot of judgment from it. And I just love that this community is so great and we just know that we are all going through something and we are all just doing our best and that's all we can do. So any kind of motivation or support that we can share is just so incredible and so needed. We can drive Drive all, drive all night We can drive all Drive all, drive all So once the shower was done, I just went into the main part of our bathroom and started wiping down our light fixtures, our mirrors, and also our countertops. And I also had this really stubborn area in our sink right by the drain. It is where all the hard water just likes to sit and create this nice little crest that's super hard to get off. And I finally figured out a great way to do this. This is something that you'll definitely wanna check out on your sink and make sure that it's not going to actually scratch your sink basin but ours is ceramic and so it didn't scratch ours. But I just used the steel scrubbers to scrape off the hard water and it actually came off super, super easy. I at first tried a magic eraser and that totally didn't work, but the steel scrubbers definitely did the trick. So now they are looking so, so nice and new. I wish I had realized this years ago, but now I know and from here on out, I can just keep our sink nice and clean and keep that hard water from really accumulating right there. It really is amazing how good it feels when you go through and just deep clean everything. And I wanted to share something because I know a lot of us are just struggling with like getting through our list and we're just having a hard time kind of powering through and getting all of it done that we know we need to get done. But something that I really kind of thought about this time for me personally is I decided to think about something that would give spring cleaning a positive spin for me. And the thing that I thought about is actually being thankful that I can clean, that my body is capable of cleaning. And something I thought about is back when I was about 15 years old, I actually got really sick and it was so painful to walk. I actually missed my sophomore year of school and it was just a really, really bad time. Now, thankfully that disease has actually gone into remission and I am so incredibly grateful for that. But having gone through that, it does really make me so grateful that at this point I'm able to do the things that I wasn't able to for a while. So anyway, Anyway, I share all of that just to remind you that anytime you are going through something or you have something on your to-do list, 
and you're really struggling through it, think about how you can kind of put a positive spin on it and think about how you can kind of just be thankful for what you're doing and it will make the whole process so much more enjoyable and also a lot easier to get through. So once I got done with everything in the bathroom, Kyle was back with the new carpet cleaner and this is just one that we actually rented from a local grocery store. But the reason that we had to rent one is actually our own fault because we accidentally brought our old carpet cleaner out into the garage and we didn't realize that there was leftover clean water in it in the water tank and it ended up freezing out there because of course here in Utah it just got a little bit too cold and it froze and it just kind of warped the solution tank and then when we pulled it out today it just would not work right and actually none of the water would even come out so we didn't really have a choice and we definitely did not want to just run out and go buy a new one so we ended up renting this one and it actually worked really great but I'm definitely going to have to look in to see if I can go ahead and just buy a new canister and still use the same carpet cleaner that we had or if I'm gonna have to go ahead and just buy a new one. And if we can't just order a replacement canister, then we will officially be in the market for a new carpet cleaner. Okay, so it is the next day. I am down in the basement and it's a wreck, of course. So we are actually going to do a quick family pickup. And then once we have everything nice and tidied up, we are going to start tackling our spring cleaning to-do list and kind of finish some things up. There are some things that I'm going to be doing but not filming just like throughout the house, but it would take forever if I filmed it all. So I will try to have a spring cleaning checklist over on my blog so that you can go ahead and print that off and check that out. But we do have a lot of stuff to get done down here. So let's go ahead and jump on into it. You 
So now that we're down in the basement, we just all jumped in and did a family pickup. I feel like all the time when you guys see us cleaning the basement, it's almost always a family pickup down here. I think it's mostly just because this is where the kids really spend a lot of time. This is actually where all of us spend a lot of time, to be honest, just because it is like so cozy down here and so comfy. And so this is where all of their toys are at. This is where a lot of just our like daily living happens aside from the kitchen, of course. And so we do feel like it's very beneficial to just to have everyone clean up and pitch in together. We were all cleaning up the mess that all of us made together. And it also just goes by really, really fast when you do this together as a family. It will get knocked out in like a matter of five or 10 minutes versus if I were just doing this by myself, it would probably take me closer to like 15 or 20 minutes. So it's definitely beneficial just to have everyone pop in and do like a five or 10 minute pickup. And so that's what we are doing here. We are just going to have everyone pick up the main room. And then once we're done in here, Kyle and I are just going to go into each of the boys' rooms individually and just help them kind of tidy their space as well. So as I was tackling Luke's room with him and I was kind of helping him with his laundry, it just made me think how fun it is to have this one-on-one -on -one time. Even if it is over cleaning, it's still just great one-on-one -on -one time with your kids and you can just have like those special moments, those fun little chats. And as you can see here, we were just kind of like chatting and giggling about something. I don't remember 100% all of the things we were talking about, but I know one of the things was I was like kind of teasing him about how I had gone through like five or six pairs of clothes and folded them and folded them inside out. And he was still working on the one pair of pants. So even just having like those little small one-on-one -on -one moments, and even if the conversation really doesn't seem like it's that important, I think it is something that's actually a little bit more special than we realized. So even though for two days straight, I was just really working on our deep spring cleaning, I am grateful that we were able to have like these little special moments kind of sprinkled in here and there. Finally, we are moving into Noah's room. And as you guys will probably see, he has really been into the whole costume thing lately. He is always dressing up as something. So today he was dressed up as one of the Star Wars characters. But anyway, when Kyle was in Noah's room and he was helping him clean everything up, he actually did a fun little game with Noah just to kind of help keep Noah a little bit more focused on cleaning. And so the game that Kyle played was that he did not know where anything went in Noah's room. And so Noah had to be the leader and he had to show Kyle where everything went. It was totally like a ridiculously silly game, but it ended up working so, so well. And Noah stayed super focused, like basically the entire time. So if you're trying to get your kids to help you with something like this, I would totally try taking just a few moments to kind of make up a fun little game, especially when they're pretty young and it will make a huge difference in everyone's attitude. And it will really make a big difference in how much help you actually get in the project.
So once we got the main living area down here all cleaned up and tidied, and we also tackled the boys' bedrooms, Kyle and I started pulling everything out of like the game room area, and I went ahead and started to vacuum and slow vacuum. And then once I was all done with that, then Kyle started carpet cleaning everything. But this is something that I really, really noticed this time in particularly when we were carpet cleaning. So in this game room, I ended up doing the slow vacuuming, of course, and there was really like no extra dog hair or cat hair that got pulled up with a carpet cleaner, or at least like none that was just left in clumps on the floor like we usually get. But then in the boys' rooms, I really didn't think there was going to be a lot of like cat hair and dog hair in there. And so I didn't really spend a whole lot of time slow vacuuming in there. I just kind of did like a regular vacuum. And whenever Kyle went into the boys bedrooms to carpet clean there was so many like big clumps of dog hair and cat hair all in like the carpet cleaner and just kind of left behind from the carpet cleaner but then like I said in this main area where I had slow vacuumed there was really none so it just really kind of solidified to me how important it is to slow vacuum it makes such a big difference and specifically when you are going to carpet clean Take the extra five or 10 minutes and just slow vacuuming the rooms and it will really make such a massive difference in your floors. I feel like our floors feel extra fluffy after carpet cleaning this time and they just feel so much cleaner. So I did just wanna take a quick second and share that little tidbit with you that I kind of learned this time. So once we had gone through the boys' bedrooms and vacuumed and carpet cleaned in there, that gave enough time for the game room area to kind of dry off before we started putting the big heavy furniture back on. And then also during this time was when I started to tackle the baseboards down here. Like you guys might know if you've been here for a while, we actually didn't really finish this basement too, too long ago. And so the baseboards were not super dirty and they just don't seem to get near as dirty down here for some reason. Maybe it's because all of the carpet is catching everything on the floors, but for whatever reason, I really didn't have to get down on my knees and scrub these. I just ended up using my e-cloth wall duster and I just kind of wiped them off that way and they ended up looking amazing once I was done. So I just went around and did that. And then once we were all done kind of moving all the furniture back over into the game room, we started tackling the theater room area. 
and we just went back through and did our slow vacuuming of course and carpet clean that area as well. This is definitely something that can be very tedious but in the end it really does make a huge huge difference. So if this is on your list don't give up before it's done. You can do this. There is an end in sight and once you are done you will feel so happy that you went through and did your entire house and just carpet cleaned everything and vacuumed everything and wiped down all those baseboards and did all the fans and all the things. It will feel so clean and so refreshing in there. So this is just me being your little cheerleader and cheering you on. So that is everything for my spring cleaning for the year. Of course, I'm going to be doing like more deep cleaning as we get closer to moving out of this home, which I can't even believe I'm saying that. It's still so surreal to me, but nevertheless, it's what's happening and that will definitely be needed when we move out. We will just be doing a lot more deep cleaning. But like I had said, I am not sharing every single thing I'm doing for spring cleaning this year on my channel just because I feel like it would take too, too many videos. And there are just so many other things that I want to share with you guys, like our basement bathroom makeover. I also have a new makeover series coming up the week after that, I believe it is. And then I also have more areas that I really want to declutter. So we just have a ton more videos coming your way, but I will make a spring cleaning printable checklist. You can go ahead and make sure you get everything checked off your list. And I will just have that available for free over on my blog. I'll have that link down below for you guys. But I hope you guys really enjoyed this series and just help give you that little boost of motivation that you needed to tackle the rest of your spring cleaning. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Thank you so, so much for being here and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Bye.